Okay, now that my microphone is working, we can actually continue with the intro. Yeah, that got gotta love tech issues. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, this is session nine of uh, Star Trek Matahari, and for those unfamiliar, uh, Matahari is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. Uh, we are set in the year 2412, 2413, aboard an Eclipse class in the Shackleton Expanse, which means that we are in the same quote-unquote canon as my Fenrir, Groundskeepers, and October games. Now, you don't need to have watched any of those to enjoy this one, but you're going to probably catch a few references and subtle nods if you do. And you can catch the VODs for all my games on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like iTunes and Spotify. Uh, the only announcement I really have this week is that we are sort of shopping around for a new security slash science officer. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, drop me a line on Twitter, Reddit, or really any social media, and uh, we'll chat. Uh, but with that said, let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with the captain. Hello, everyone. I am Bear Wolf. I am playing Captain Frederick O'Connor. And if you're interested in science, we're a pretty cool crew. <laughs> I gave you points for that. You get points. I had to yeah. let the awkward silence stand because the awkward silence is always funny. Yay. Um, yep. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Nikhil, and uh, I play the first officer, Commander, Commander Jara Rion. And we are a pretty cool crew. But I'm not going to do the finger points. Oh. <laughs> Lied. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex. I am playing the ship's intelligence officer, Commander Prawl. We are an amazing crew. <sighs> you get them from me, too. <laughs> oh, man. That's a lot of pressure, you guys. I'm Brian uh, at Mind Over Brian on Twitter. Uh, I'm playing uh, Lu uh, Commander Jemmer Toleyup the chief engineer of the Matahari. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know what? We're pretty cool. So double finger guns. Hey. Nice. And of course, if you don't know me, I'm ELH, the game master. With that said, let's go ahead and run our introduction. Right, welcome back. So if you haven't really tuned into my Star Trek streams before, something I like doing is having the players uh, do an opening monologue. And today that's going to come from Commander Toleyup. Second officer's personal log, Stardate 90204.3. After another long stay at Deep Space August, the Matahari has returned to the Shackleton Expanse. Splitting my duties between engineering and the bridge has meant a greater alliance on the engineering crew. Lieutenants Malkovich and McTavish have been indispensable at managing the workload. On the other hand, my increased presence on the bridge has made me very aware of Lieutenant Commander Jensen's deep and abiding interest in my work. I had no idea as a scientist that he would be so interested in day-to-day -day engineering minutia, and yet he takes great pains to review all the work I do. I can only assume he seeks to better his own work, or at least his knowledge of basic engineering. I applaud his initiative and hope someday soon he will feel comfortable enough with me to ask directly for my help. On a less positive note, I have some very deep reservations about our current mission. Starfleet has tasked us with seeking out further tachyon black holes, which makes sense, but our orders upon discovery are to close or destroy them by any means necessary. 
At the captain's request, I have been stalling on figuring out the logistics of this order, as he is also troubled by this initiative. However, we have now reached a section of the expanse that is rife with gravimetric anomalies, and my time is going to be stretched even thinner as engineering and science work double time to scan and classify each one. On a final note, my efforts to subvert the new computer core have been largely unsuccessful. I've managed to covertly curtail several of its more insidious surveillance subroutines, but the engineering crew assigned to its maintenance are constantly coming up with new and more creative ways to surveil the crew and our systems. While nothing pleases me more than watching their grumbling faces over their breakfasts after I spend the night sabotaging their latest villainy and hiding my tracks, I admit I'm starting to get tired. And I've made no headway at cracking the encryption on the core, which is disappointing. Computer, end log and encrypt to layup alpha delta three seven sigma four. And of course the computer chimes and we move from a exterior shot of the Matahari to the intelligence office where Prawl, you're doing whatever it is you're doing when there's a chime at your door. Enter. And in steps, none other than Commander Jaro. Commander, what can I do for you? Well, um, Commander Tulayup has uh, has been um, talking a lot about this new computer core yes, that I'm aware. Intelligence has, uh, has installed. I wanted to make sure I understood all of the implications of that. If you have uh, if you have some time. Please go ahead and sit down. I've been looking at information about it myself recently. Could you, do you have any idea why Starfleet Intelligence insisted on putting this core here and what the implications for our day-to-day -day business are? From what's been divulged to me, and keep in mind, I may be the chief intelligence officer on our ship, but there are still those with greater clearance than I have. We were chosen to put the core here because we are the most advanced ship in the fleet, the most advanced ship out in this sector. We are one of the biggest ships. We are on the cutting edge of everything. I mean, look at where we are and what our current mission is. As for what this means for us, we're being watched by more than just Starfleet Command. And if if Starfleet Intelligence decided that they didn't like something they were doing, would access to this core allow them to um, control any of our systems? The only thing that this computer core is connected to would be sensors and scanners. It does not have a connection to any power grids. It does not have a connection to weapon systems. Hmm. Well, that relieves some of my concerns, but still, given that sometimes we get orders that are confusing or, uh, you know, not in our best interest, I do think that sometimes we uh, we take a roundabout path to solving our missions, and it doesn't feel great to have somebody staring over our shoulder the entire time. It, to be fair, we always have someone staring over our shoulder the entire time. That's fair. What do you propose we do about this? Well, I think if... Commander Toliap had his way, the entire core would be disabled by now. That doesn't seem that yeah. That doesn't seem realistic to me. However, would there be any way to build in some kind of blind spot? or just any way that we could keep some of our guards closer to our chest without Starfleet Intelligence knowing that we've tampered with the core. So are you asking me to sabotage? 
I'm asking you if hypothetically that would be possible. Hypothetically, I may be able to figure something out that on the premise would give us a little extra autonomy. Understood. Well, I trust you, that might surprise you to hear, I trust you to, uh, to, to handle this the way you think is best. Well, I'm surprised that you have so much faith in me, considering. I may need to talk to Commander Toliup. Fair enough. And I'd, I'd like to say, even though we don't always see eye to eye, I have noticed you always put the good of the ship first. So while I might not always agree with your decisions, I think I generally agree with where they're coming from. Well, if I don't put the good of the ship, I may not be getting back either. Hmm. Hadn't thought about it that way. Well, I guess I don't have to to, to, to change my opinion of Cardassian. <laughs> no, I'm glad I could help the Bajoran <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. And we're actually going to transition uh, to a little bit uh, into Alpha Shift. And all of you, uh, Talaip, Captain, Prawl, Jaro, uh, all of you have gathered in the meeting room on deck one in the CIC. And uh, it is time for your daily stand-up meeting. And what that means is uh, there's coffee, other refreshments, bits of pastries. Uh, in the meeting with you, of note, is also Lieutenant Commander Zonsa. And you also have Titania, your uh, 8472 ambassador that just hasn't had a whole lot of screen time. So I thought I'd throw her in there for the mix. But yeah, Captain, uh, after you get your uh, pot of coffee or whatever it is you're drinking, I'm going to let you run your own meeting. Morning, everyone. Hope everyone slept well. Welcome to Alpha Shift, as always. Um, as I like to do, how's everyone feeling today? Very good, Captain. Thank you, second officer. Always the first. <sighs> we'll actually start with you. Um, how's the progress on uh, figuring out a way to destroy those uh, tachyon black holes? Uh, well, we're a little bit stymied as we don't have a lot of information about uh, the current black hole, we're waiting on some reports from Deep Space August uh, about uh, telemetry around the existing Tachyon black hole and its emanations. So yeah, we're a little, little stymied is where we are. That's really unfortunate to hear. I'll, uh, I wish you all the best, though. You know, keep up the good work for sure. Uh, Titania that's... actually raises her hand, uh, if I may, Captain. Please. Uh, Titania smiles and says, thank you. Uh, Commander Taleif, um, I might have something that it would interest you. I mean, if I understand correctly, these are essentially just quantum singularities, correct? Uh, that would be the, would that would appear to be the case, yes. Then why don't we treat this like a breach into fluidic space? Would it not be the same procedure to collapse such a thing? Well, possibly, but there are some... Uh, complications we we fear about around uh, collapsing it without taking into account the radio ma radiographic uh, effects uh, it, it, honestly I, I wish the science officer were here to, to, to offer you more explanation as uh, I'm only uh, I'm only worried about the interactions with the, sh the ship's systems hmm. well I mean um, and she sort of looks around at everybody and you know that that is odd I wonder where Jensen is um I, I I don't know who should I captain who should I send this data to in Jensen's stead? Just send it to me directly. I'll take care of it. Sure thing. And uh, of course, sorry to interrupt. Not at all. Please, I I would encourage you to speak freely. I mean, this is just our morning shakedown meeting. Uh, it's an opportunity for everyone to voice any opinions, concerns, or bring up anything they'd like to work on. Um, Jaro, how close are we to the field of anomaly, gravitational anomalies that we, uh, we, we've been scanning for? How close are we now? Uh, close enough to cause me some discomfort, but, um, <laughs> we've learned a lot about keeping a safe distance. So, uh, we've, uh, I've been working with, uh, 
Commander Tolev to make sure we are uh, uh, just that sweet spot where we can uh, get in if we see any any changes very quickly, but don't have to suffer any of the effects of being too close. Um, but they're they're on the horizon. It would I think it, likely it would just be a few hours um, if if we needed to go. I'd like to start with long range scans. Um, if we could send out three probes um, and a 90 degree arc in front of us, I'd just like to have some sort of you know, precursor uh, advanced warning system ahead of us. Um, to lay up, is that something that we could get done? Put uh, three probes out in front of us as almost like a net to protect us, make sure we don't run into any of these anomalies again? I'm sure something could be arranged. Very good. Uh, Prawl, anything to report from the... Uh, Security side of things, or intelligence, as it were? I chuckle. <laughs> Nothing that I think impacts the mission that we're on right now. We, Starfleet Intelligence, really doesn't have any more information about these singularities than we have available to us right now. Fair enough. We are a bit of the uh, guinea pigs in this situation, it would appear. Other than that, Zonza, anything to add? And Zonsa almost starts like she wasn't paying attention. She goes, oh, um, sorry, Captain. I was, um, here, I'll just show you. And she sort of flicks her pad, the, the screen of her pad up, and above the uh, conference table using the holographic emitters in here, uh, what appears is the picture of, like, a Klingon Targ, or basically the Klingon equivalent of a dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, she points at it and says, now... Captain, we don't have any of these on board. I've checked, I've double-checked, I've triple-checked, but every single time, or at least every hour, you, you know we have a regular security suite that goes every hour to check the interior of the ship. Mm -hmm. It keeps reporting that there's a Targ on Deck 3. That seems odd. Could it be an issue with the holographic projectors like it was with the uh, original Captain? That was my first thought, actually, sir, and I've checked myself several times, in fact. Those hollow emitters haven't been activated in quite a while. Hmm. That's somewhat disconcerting. Um, I'd like to post a security detail on, it's only Deck 3 that you're seeing this? Only Deck 3, and it's not in one place either. It's across the entire deck, which is even more odd. Hmm. Uh, Lieutenant like Commander, to... when you have a moment, I'd love to see those results, uh, those scans. And uh, she sort of does a swipe to the right, and on your pad, you now have the uh, same scans. Uh, Taleb, if you want to roll me a reason and an engineering at a difficulty of one. Uh, computers is a focus? Yeah, I would give it to you. Wow, very nice. Starting off with four successes, which means three momentum. So, Taleb, you see the problem immediately. In fact, this is one of those things where had they brought it to you first, you could have easily fixed this and wouldn't have even been worthy of a report kind of a thing. Um, the culprit is that there is a faulty EPS juncture near one of the turbo lifts. And every time a turbo lift passes by, I think you know where I'm going with this. I... It looks like this is just a faulty EPS conduit next to one of the turbo lifts. Uh, Lieutenant Commander, if you just brought this to my attention earlier, we could have had nip this right in the bud. Oh, um, my apologies. I didn't know the procedure for this sort of thing. It, it, I didn't think it would be th in the future. Yes, I'll, I, I will do that. Sorry. Excellent. Commander Taleb, could you get a engineering crew over to fix it right away? I'll have someone on, the, on it right, at, <clears throat> right after this meeting, Captain. Excellent. Just chew your food before you respond. <laughs> mm. Other than that, everyone, uh, you are dismissed. Feel free to continue to eat if you see fit. I'm going to take my position the uh, on the uh, on the bridge. Cheers. All right. I'll walk over the bridge. So, unless anybody lingers for conversation, you all sort of filter back out into the CIC to uh, observe and otherwise, uh, you know, take place uh, at Alpha Shift. But uh, what's going to happen is probably about 10, 20 minutes after you've sent out the probes, uh, what happens is the stand-in science officer, uh, who I guess we should come up with a name for him. 
Uh, let's do Jatrell. Uh, who who made Jatrell? I forget. I did. You did. I uh, I will not make you talk to yourself unless you really want to. But uh, does he have an accent I should be aware of? No, no. He's just straight up Vulcan. Clean, clean Vulcan. Clean Vulcan. Got it. So uh, Jatrell speaks up and says, um, Captain, I am detecting a very odd sense of readings coming from the anomalies ahead of us. It appears that we have life forms living inside of these gravimetric anomalies, but that's not logical because nothing could live in such a thing. I mean, this is uncharted space. Nothing has to be logical for it to be true. Can you get more detailed scans of these creatures? We would have to get a bit closer, sir. Um, Talea, dangers in getting closer? I think the shields have been reinforced in such a way that we should be able to withstand the radiation at anything approaching about 10,000 kilometers. Would that be close enough? More than, more than sufficient. Yes, sir. All right. Let's uh, raise shields. Bring us within 10,000 10, kilometers, you said, Toya? Indeed. Very good. Bring us within uh, 10,000 kilometers of the anomaly, and let's get some more detailed scans of these creatures. All right. So I'm actually going to put you on this map because it actually shows uh, what's going on a hell of a lot better than me describing it, but I'm still going to describe it. So uh, what you see on sort of the CIC sensors is ahead of the Matahari are a myriad of singularities. Now, when I say gravimetric anomaly, I don't just mean black holes, but black holes are primarily what the gravimetric anomalies are. Um, sort of to describe what you're seeing on screen is anything in the orange is going to start taking a difficulty to navigate away from an anomaly. If you go into the red, you fall past the event horizon, and the only way to escape is FTL, or warp drive. Um, what I would point out, though, and this is Jatrell uh, speaking, uh, sir, we are detecting not only creatures, but there is indeed what appears to be a tachyon singularity at the end. And uh, as he says that, uh, the hollow view screen sort of zooms in, and coming out of the nearest gravimetric anomaly is what is essentially a space kraken. So a very large, almost runabout-sized uh, squid-like creature that has bioluminescent coloring and just a bunch of tentacles and eyes, but it just sort of emerges from the anomaly, uh, sort of floats over towards the next one, and then disappears into that anomaly. And if you were to watch for about two to three minutes, you would see the same sort of procedure where every single uh, anomaly except for the tachyon one has creatures moving in and out of them. I would ask Jatrell to get a very detailed scan of the creature as it passes by, but to maintain distance from it. Um, let's just scan it from a distance and give me as much data as you can. All right. Well, if someone wants to roll for Jatrell, uh, he is going to be doing a reason medicine at a difficulty of three, but you have advanced sensors, so two. And he does have a focus here of xenobiology. And let's say the Matahari will assist him with a sensor science. All right. I'll roll for the ship then. Okay. I'll roll I'll roll for J Jitrell. Sorry, that was a uh, medicine what? Uh, reason medicine or reason science, whichever you'd prefer. He's better at All right. Four successes, which means I believe you guys are now at uh, five momentum. So Jatrell sort of looks at the results and says, well, um, this is interesting, sir. Uh, they are Solanogen based, which means they're from subspace or subspace adjacent. And they're traveling to normal space via these grav gravimetric anomalies. Are these naturally forming? Do we know? Or they, do they appear to be constructed? What can you tell us? I honestly don't know, sir, and I mean no disrespect. These are unlike any anomalies that I've ever seen. Uh, you, you're familiar with the Bajoran wormhole, yes, sir? Of course. Imagine a Bajoran wormhole that has multiple openings, wherein they all lead to the same place, 
but there's multiple openings. Um, let me put it this way. Uh, you know how it ends in the Delta or in the Gamma Quadrant, yes? Of course. Well, let's say, for example, that there was a another wormhole near Cardassian space, but not at DS9. But that still led to the same place in the Gamma Quadrant. So it's as if the exits are a honeycomb, and all the honeycomb all lands in the same quadrant, but in different sections of that quadrant through the same initial corridor. Uh, the entrance is, sir, yes. Hmm. Interesting. Can just we scan to, inside? Please. Oh, sorry, just to clarify, our mission was to destroy the Tachyon anomaly, right? Not anything else? Or was Starfleet, or did Starfleet send us here to destroy all of this? Um, just the Tachyon ones. Uh, so, Mr. Jatrell, Jatrell sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, Captain. Would destroying the Tachyon anomaly have an effect on these uh, mini wormholes or these other other creatures that sort of seem to be living here. And Detrell spends a good 30 seconds to a minute just studying his console before he answers. And all of you would notice that the more he looks at the data, the more concerned he gets, which for a Vulcan especially, means it's not good. Mm. And eventually Detrell says... I have studied the data, sirs, and to be blunt in a human fashion, I believe that if we were to destroy the Tachyon Singularity, we would essentially be destroying the honeycomb, as you put it. This is a pickle indeed. <sighs> Tolea, we still don't have a good way to destroy this thing as it stands, correct? I have not yet had a chance to review the data from the groundskeepers, but uh, so far I don't have enough specific data to, uh, to postulate, Captain. Prawl, do you think you could figure out a way to attempt to contact or communicate with these creatures, see if they're intelligent? Can we send out a subspace wave? Can we, obviously there's nothing to hail, but any ideas? Well, I was considering that already before you even asked. I was considering if we launched a beacon probe, see if they even respond to its presence. Let's make it happen. Please. All right. So, Prawl, I'd like you to roll me a, uh, let's call this a control and a security for you. Um, difficulty of two. And I tell you what, I'll even let the ship assist you with a communications and science. I'd like to spend one of our deter uh, one piece of momentum for an extra die. Okay. Do it. Would what? investigation count for a focus on this? Actually, it would. I might actually give you additional information if you get enough successes. Nice. All right, three successes, which means you get that momentum right back. So you sort of wait until there's a large grouping of the creatures. So let me throw a few on the map here. Uh, we'll say there's a one there, maybe one floating around there, maybe one there as well. And as you're waiting for a good grouping of them, Prawl, you have the foresight to check into your new shiny computer database that you had installed. And there's actually a record of something similar to these creatures. You know, a Solanogen-based creature is a rarity. Um, what you find is that there was a recording on a planet in the Shackleton Expanse uh, almost about 40 years ago, uh, around 2372, or maybe it was 73, um, where the crew of the Arcadia encountered a Solanogen-based life form known as the Opterans. And they were communicating by uh, essentially radiation pulses. So I'd go ahead and relay this information to the rest of the command crew. Can you recreate it? The sound? A radiation based communication? I mean, with uh, Commander Toliab's help, there should be no problem in modifying one of our probes to accomplish this. How long do you need? Five minutes is what I would say. Make it so. 
All right. Uh, so, uh, Prawl, I'd like you to roll me a, let's call this a control and a security on your part. To lay up, you're going to be doing a daring and engineering. And uh, what I would say is uh, you guys can figure out who's assisting whom, but the difficulty on this will be a three. My daring engineering. And some momentum. Okay. So I'll take the lead on this one. Okay. okay. So I'm going to use momentum to gain another die. Okay. Would improvisation be an applicable focus? Uh, I could see an argument for it, sure. Fusion reactors as a focus? Um, Unfortunately, no. Fusion reactors will not help you here. All right, there's the three you need. So with the two of you working together, you are able to modify a probe and send it out. And uh, let me actually just draw it here on the map so we know where it is for reference. Uh, let me pick a color the stream will see. Light blue should work. So let's say you send the probe right about here to W15, right in the middle of the sort of the corridor between the gravimetric anomalies. And uh, after a few moments of it arriving, uh, one of the creatures sort of floats on over to it. And uh, the probe begins broadcasting the radiation signals both to and from the Matahari. So what would you like to say? We come in peace. Let's keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay. Uh, so you send that message, and the creature, sort of the bioluminescence on its form, uh, strobes in a pattern. And what you get back is not so much a sentence, but a jumble of words. And those words are peace, curiosity, and questioning. Those three words. Send back. Exploration. Understanding. Answers. I'd like you to roll me a presence command. Ooh, difficulty right. of three. And if you have linguistics or anything close to it as a focus, I would let that happen. Um, the Madhuri will assist you with its own comms and science. I have persuasion, etiquette. Uh, it's a stretch, but I'll give you etiquette. Yeah. You're the man. Um, ELH for what, president. What is the ship doing again? Com science. Com Presence science. and command, you said? Yep. Presence and command. Uh, may I spend a momentum crew? Oh, good. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. All right, there's an assist from the Matahari. Yeah. All right, there's the three you need. So you don't actually get a reply from the creature. It actually almost looks like it loses interest as it starts to float away. And after a moment, you realize why. Um, coming out of one of the gravimetric anomalies is a larger version of the creature. Like if this was a runabout size, this is easily like Nova or Defiant sized. So big difference in scale here. Um, but it comes out of the gravimetric anomaly. Uh, floats over to the probe, and uh, this time when you get a reply, it's in a coherent sentence. It's still very basic, but it is at least a coherent sentence. And whatever they are, they say, hello, we are the, and then there's an untranslatable word, and then it continues to say, we live here. Are you here to visit? All right, let's put together a response. Um, Prawl, thoughts. How should we respond? Yes, we're here to visit. We don't want to tell them we were sent here to destroy anything. Well, at this point, I think destroying it is completely out of the question. First officer, thoughts? Oh, yes. No, I'd, I'd absolutely agree that destroying this is, is off the table. So simply opening up channels of communication, I think would be a good first step, but eventually we're gonna have to get it back to Starfleet that there's creatures living here and and hearing is how they, I, I would assume they wouldn't want us to go ahead with this, but they've been acting kind of strange lately. Very true, there are uh, lots of strangeness. 
Uh, set a response prawl. Um, we are simply explorers. We came here to understand um, where do you originate from? Um, it does not appear that you are from this section of space. What can you tell us? So I'll go ahead and send that message. All right. So the reply you get is, we are from the subspace C, and they specifically use the word C. We have always lived here. There is a new entry. What do you mean by entry? And I would flavor on the view screen that the creature, at least relative to the probe, if you were to look from the probe to the creature, this would make sense. But the Matahari, looking at the creature from the Matahari's perspective, it won't make sense. But from the probe's perspective, the creature sort of uh, unfurls a tentacle or a uh, tendril and points at the tachyon singularity. Oh, interesting. How long has this new entry been here? And do you know why it came or where it came from? We do not know when it first appeared. It does not take us home. Where does it take you? We do not know. The children we have sent have never returned. That seems disconcerting. Has anyone else been here? You are the first visitors in a long time. Who came before us? And interestingly enough, uh, this does translate the Takan. If I should know that name, I don't. Does anybody know that name? I look at, I ask the crew. Does anyone know who the Takan are? No, Captain. Nope. I want to check the intelligence database and see if there's anything there. Okay. And yeah, the moment you type into Khan, you get an immediate uh, data entry. Um, so both in and out of character as a reminder, uh, the Takan were a galaxy spanning civilization that literally had the ability to transport stars and planets around. Um, they were highly advanced, uh, but they disappeared about 50,000 years ago. As in, they were at the height of their glory. They were more or less a huge power across the galaxy. And then for some reason, they more or less disappeared. The Dakan hasn't been around for 50,000 years. Really? Interesting. That's almost power on the level that the ancient Iconians had. I will ask the creature once again... Um, did you meet with these Takan yourself, or was it some of your ancestors? This one did not encounter the Takan. This one's mother's mother did. So they lived for a long time. Wow. What is it that you do jumping between these different channels or openings, as you call them? Are you, are you eating? Are you just gathering information to... We're just interested to know more about your species. And this time, there isn't a reply. At least, not a verbal one. Uh, what you see, though, is uh, one of the kids, one of the, you know, the kid squids, um, ends up sort of floating near a gravimetric anomaly. And you focus in on it because it's one of the only things moving on the view screen right now. And looking carefully, coming out of the anomaly, almost like a particle stream, is a basically a jet of radiation that the creature sort of floats into and you notice that the creature's energy levels are rising as it takes in this energy. Wow. Cool. So they are eating. Neat. Um, Prawl, make sure you're getting a full scan of that. This is <laughs> this is why we're in space. To discover these sort of things. Hi, sir. I don't mean to sound cheeky here, crew, but it's nice to just have a first contact for once after all the things we've been through. Um, yep, then can we you try know, get a translation of their name? Yes, Taleb, I'm sorry. You know that if anything goes wrong now, it's your fault, right? Thank you, second officer. I appreciate your vote of confidence. I look to the first officer. You take the con on this one. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 
Um, at this point, I mean, I just want to make sure that we keep a respectful distance. We continue to take scans. Um, I would like to send a probe closer. Um, I would like to ask permission uh, from the creature. We're going to send another probe, which is the device we're communicating you with, closer to the tachyon. Uh, well, I don't say tachyon, but closer to the new portal mm -hmm. um, with your permission. We don't want to intrude upon your sector of space. Obviously, you were here first, but we'd like to get some closer scans or information from that new portal if you're okay with it. You're okay with it. Very good. Um, Prom, please launch the uh, probe. Uh, sure. All right. So I need to be very clear here. Who is piloting, quote unquote, the probe? I'll do it. I haven't flown a probe in a while. Let me get my hands dirty. All right. So let me uh, let me draw another shape here so that we've got a little token to deal with. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, you s obviously on the map, you guys can see that there's quite a bit of uh, gravimetric disturbance based on the orange and red auras. So it's one of those things where you have to be careful about steering this so that it doesn't like fall into an anomaly. Uh, let's do green for this one. All right. So uh, I'm going to need either I'll give you an option. You can either do an extended task, Captain, or you could do a high difficulty singular task. What does the crew think? You think pretty we... good with these high difficulty tasks. Sometimes. <laughs> Let's risk it to get the biscuit. High difficulty it is. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be a daring and a con. It will be a difficulty of four. And I will say you may have up to one other assist on this. And that can include another person or it can include the Matahari. Uh I would like our helm officer to assist me. Ensign she Raven. Good at flying. All right. And so... would the crew be all right if I spent at least one momentum here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to do that. So it's 3d20 plus our old helm officer's assist. And I do have um, helm operations. Would that suffice here? Because I'm piloting. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. And would, then someone wants would to... Raven also be doing Daring Con? Yes, would also be doing Daring Con. Yes. All right. Well, there's, Come on. there's three. So we just need an assist from Raven. Come on, Raven. Yeah. So nice. All right. Four. So True. sort of cutting back out to the space scene, we see the probe uh, masterfully dodging. Uh, between each of the uh, subspace anomalies or the gravimetric anomalies. And the probe eventually reaches the edge of the tachyon singularity's area of effect. And what happens is as soon as it starts to cross the threshold, uh, something very odd happens. And what I mean by that is that instead of transmitting data back to you, it actually starts to take data in, almost reversing the flow of information. Weird. Is it taking anything in particular? Like, should we try to cut the stream? I'm, I asked the crew. What's going on? I need information. And uh, Zone says the first report, sir, it's, it's trying to download the new computer core information. I just think that... Destroy that probe. Yeah. yeah, destroy the probe. Yeah. Self destruct. All right. Uh, I'm going to actually spend two threat here that when you send the self destruct code, it does not detonate. Well, aren't you just a cutie patootie? All right. <laughs> of course. Um, crap. Captain, do you still have piloting control? Just send it into the singularity. I do have piloting control. I'm just going to just crash it into the singularity as quickly okay. as I can. Maximum impulse. So you send it further it past the threshold. And what happens is, is that the closer it gets to that sort of red uh, red event horizon of no return, the download gets faster and faster and faster. Of course it does. I want to cut the subspace communication between the Matahari and the probe. Okay. Uh, how are you doing it exactly? Are you telling the computer to do it? Or are you literally going to the computer core and ripping out a wire? Oh. Crawl, just extend the backup and treat in interference sustainer, and that should cut the signal. That's what I'm doing. Gonna 
<laughs> alter it in the computer. All right, so I'm going to need you to do a daring in a uh, daring in a security, and if the ship can assist with a communications and security. All oh, right, difficulty. Word. Difficulty will be a four on this one. It even had the word interference in it. That's the best techno babble I could have gotten. Come on. <laughs> no, I liked it. It was it was very good. <laughs> Is the crew good for another momentum? Please. Yeah. Um, really. Would yeah. composure be acceptable focus? Yeah, you're trying not to freak out, so I'd let it happen. All right, so that is three successes, which means I'll give you a choice. This can either fail outright, and you'll really only have to worry about the download, or this can succeed at cost, but there will be a complication involved. Complication, complication. Let's get, let's get weird. Come on. All right. What's our complication then? All right. So the complication is that you are able to more or less cut the signal. But when you do so, what happens is the squid creatures uh, immediately begin to flail and otherwise like shriek or at least that's what's coming through the probe, somehow you are disrupting their natural state of being by jamming your own signal. Aren't you a stickler, good <laughs> sir? <laughs> I have no regrets. <laughs> Crap, says O'Connor. Um, I need options. This is not going well. Um, first officer, chief engineer, science, options. I think we need to, to, well, the probe is, 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 is beyond our hands at this point, unfortunately. I think that, I think that we might want to turn, turn it, turn it back on. I mean, I know that there was, that it downloaded a lot of information from us already. I just, I, I have to ask. At the rate that it was downloading information, do we have anything more to lose at this point? Do we know if it transmitted that data anywhere yet? I love I love the science because that is literally what happens is everybody just looks at each other like, uh, maybe? Captain, if we restrict the uh, feed inhibitor on the communications systems i may be able to uh, slow down the download at least uh, by restricting the data flow make it happen re-establish communication with the probe we have to stop hurting these creatures all right so what happens is uh you let the probe continue to download data and it literally takes even with your new sort of feature of limitation it maybe takes another 30 seconds before it has downloaded the entire database and by this point, the probe is going to fall into the anomaly itself, meaning it passes the event horizon and disappears. However, uh, what you're detecting is there is now a massive surge of energy, a massive surge of radiation coming from the Tachyon Singularity. And almost immediately, every single console in the CIC goes dark. And appearing on the screen is an Omega symbol. And that's where we're going to take our 10-minute break. So uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
and welcome back. So if you're just tuning in, uh, the crew of the Matahari has uh, more or less made first contact with uh, Solanogen-based squid, or Solanogen-based space kraken, when, um, let's say, they um, they stirred the pot. They, uh, they threw some sticks onto the fire. And in the process, uh, some of the radiation coming out of the Tachyon Singularity that they have come to investigate has triggered the Omega Directive. So we're actually going to go back to the CIC for this scene. As, uh, of course, every single console, every single uh, monitor is showing the symbol of Omega, the Greek symbol for the end. And uh, Jatrell speaks up first and says, um, Sir, before the Omega Directive kicked in, I was able to confirm. It seems as if the Tachyon Singularity was emitting Omega radiation. Which, if you don't mind me postulating, sir, would logically indicate that it is from an area of space or a manifold or something of the nature where Omega is present. Which, again, if you don't mind me postulating, would mean that this is why we weren't told specifically about why they needed to be destroyed. It makes sense. I need all information from... Janeway's interaction with the Omega particle where she destroyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I need that information in my ready room a ASAP. Well, actually, Captain, uh, and this is out of character, you are the only one that can unlock the computer right now. Oh! Boop, 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 boop! I unlock it. All right. So, of course, when you enter in your code, all the screens go back to normal. Uh, all the data is piped to your ready room, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but it is at this point that Titania actually sort of wanders back out onto the bridge and says, uh, Captain, can I have a moment with you in uh, Prawl? Or not Prawl, uh, you and Jaro in your ready room? I was just about to meet with him. You're welcome to join. Okay. So, of course, Jaro and Captain and Titania, you guys step into the Captain's ready room. And uh, when you sit down behind your chair, uh, Captain, you, of course, look at your uh, desk computer and see that there is a multitude of uh, data from Janeway's excursion. Um, but what's really catching your attention is the fact that their method of containment um, would involve actually going into the singularity itself to collect the Omega particles. Of course it would. But... Janeway always did have a death wish. But what I would say is that uh, once you've read this and, Jaro, you've taken a seat, Titania actually remains standing and sort of looks out the window behind you, Captain, and says, Well, I only know so much about your, um, what is it, the Omega Particle is what it's called, Captain? Correct. As far as I'm aware, subspace does not exist within fluidic space. What are you getting at? I'm saying that maybe this doesn't have to be a cataclysmic event where you have to destroy an entire species that you've just made first contact with. Just spit it out. What are you implying? What do you think we can do? Well, I think if we open a fluidic singularity on top of the Tachyon one, we might be able to collapse and contain this problem. There is a catch, though, Captain. Um, by doing this, we're going to piss off a whole lot of Undine. Not the groundskeepers faction, of course, but we're going to piss off a lot of Undine doing this. Uh, Jaro, I want your opinion on this. Well, it's my understanding that they already don't like us, so I'm not particularly worried about that. Is this safe? Is this a safe procedure, Ambassador, for the ship? It has the risk of burning out your deflector, but risk to the ship, I couldn't tell you. I mean, might be the case that some Undine ships come through and try to destroy the Matahari, but... I couldn't tell you. I honestly, every time we open a singularity in the fluidic space, it's kind of random where it ends up. Could this be seen as an act of war? Conceivably, yes. Well, that's not good. If you, unless you have anything else to add, I'd like to meet with my first officer for a few moments. Uh, of course, sir. I'll, uh, I'll step out. 
and uh, Ambassador Titania leaves the office. As she leaves, I spin the computer around so that you can see it, Jaro. Just give you a moment to kind of look at the data. It would appear, Jaro, we have two options. Destroy the singularity, potentially wipe out a first contact, or shunt the singularity into fluidic space and potentially start a war. Which do you think is the lesser of two evils? I think, and this is just my opinion, I don't want to be responsible for the slaughter of this, of this species. The undying, they already don't particularly like us. From what my discussions with the ambassador, we've been prepping for a fight for some time. Um, and for all we know, they're actually the ones behind um, behind this happening right now. I mean, I know there's something on the other end that pulled information from our probe and initiated this. I don't think that was random. I would rather take the risk of angering the Indane who already, like I said, don't like us than to, to harm or hurt these, these people who have been existing here. And we're existing here just fine until we came along. Jarl, there's one thing that you just said that I want to be very perfectly clear about. Did you just imply that there's a possibility that the Undine could be behind this? When you made that implication, do you have any proof to back that up or, or is it pure speculation? Unfortunately, it's pure speculation. I mean, we could look. We then could I'm going to ask in the future, Jaro, that you keep pure speculation to yourself. Mm -hmm. Something like that stated from a commanding officer could be seen as dangerous. And I mean this, and I'm telling you this with the utmost respect. I have those opinions myself, but make sure in the future when you bring them up, it is truly only between you and I. As of right now, we have a alien, not alien, but a secret computer on the, on the ship that could be recording everything we're saying right now. Just be careful. Understood, Captain. That's, thank you for the advice. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. With that being said, I share your sentiment, and I do believe that the course of sending the particle into Undine space seems to be the safest course of action to protect this seemingly peaceful species. Let's return to the bridge, let the crew know what the plan is. Agreed? Agreed. And we depart back to the bridge. All right, you step back into the bridge. As the captain comes out, I'm gonna walk up, come back with me into your office. <laughs> captain stops right here, <laughs> sighs heavily, turns around and walks back into his office and sits down. Jaro, as, I, as you pass me, yeah. get started on the, uh, get started on what we discussed. All right. So yeah, I'll head to the bridge and fail to lay up in. Okay. How can I help you, Paul? Sit here and I want you to just listen for a moment, okay? With that, I'm going to turn to the captain's communication console, mm -hmm. turn it around so he isn't seen behind it, mm -hmm. and try and get a hold of a contact at Starfleet Intelligence. Okay. Uh, tell me, who are you calling? Probably I'm going to call one of the higher ranking individuals that I report to directly. Say his name is Mr. Jefferson. You're pretty sure that's not his real name, but you've always just called him Jefferson. And I'd like to further amp up the cheesiness by when you actually get through, it's not a picture of Jefferson. What you see is kind of that shadowy figure with the light behind them. So you can't actually see their face. And uh, Jefferson says, uh, well, now this is a pleasant surprise. Um, what can I do for you, Mr. Prawl? Omega. Oh, dear. Was there any foreknowledge of this in regard to these singularities? Well, you are bound to find out eventually. Yes, that is why we have um, extended the Omega Directive to include closing those singularities. We were hoping you wouldn't find out, but such as it is, I suppose you already know the cat's out of the bag. Is it present around the new space station that was just built? Why do you think we built a space station there? 
I just wanted to be clear, sir. Well, I love our little chats, but if there's nothing else, um, I apparently have a lot of paperwork to prepare for. You don't even know the half of it. Prawl out. And that's turn look up at the captain. Who slams his fist down. Those fucking... <sighs> I want your thoughts, Prawl. What should we do here? What are the options you're looking at right now? First option is to destroy it uh, with the Janeway maneuver where they collapse the singularity by collecting the omega particle. That would, however, inadvertently kill the new species or seemingly, assumably kill them. The other option was brought to me by Tatiana to send the omega particle by opening a rift into fluidic space into fluidic space that might have the unfortunate consequences of starting a war. I assume you and Commander Jaro have already decided on a course of action. War. And I sigh and kind of just shake my head. I don't know which would be the better course myself. We'll follow your lead on this. If you had a better option, I would be all ears. But at this point, we're already on the brink of war. Well, actually, let me ask you that. Are the rumors true? I've heard some think, talk with the other captains and my recent interaction with the Admiral. We did discuss it, but has intelligence shared anything else with you? Nothing about us being on the brink of war. Do you trust Tatiana? I told you my previous experience with her species. You're dismissed. I have a few things to think about. Aye, sir. All right. So, Prawl, you, uh, you step out of the office back to the CIC where you are seated. And, uh, Captain, you maybe start to think about, you know, what to do next when there's a flash of light. And appearing before you is none other than Delancey Q. And Q says, well, isn't this quaint? This is much better than that dingy old Enterprise E that they've got in mothballs now. <sighs> what are you doing here, Q? Well, I'm here to see how you screw this one up. How delightful. Really? That's all you have to say? How delightful? How droll. Hugh, I've read every report on your interactions with Picard, Janeway, and a myriad of other captains. I just don't have the patience to deal with you. And I get up and I walk out of my ready room. <laughs> and I think it's one of those things where as you're going, he says, oh, how rude. Hmm, you'll have to work on that temper, Captain. And he snaps his fingers and Q disappears. And I'm not doing this just to screw with you guys. There actually is a good reason why Q is I, here. No, I'm done with it, man. <laughs> I walk over and I reach and I sit down at the uh, CIC station. Jaro, I just had a visitation from Q. Uh, a, a Q entity? The Q entity. The one I'm sure you've read about. Oh, oh my God. Is just, he behind this? I have no idea. Put the ship on yellow alert. I want all crew members present and accounted for and for the love of god's sake please just keep him away shake my head and um look over at uh jaro and not jaro over at Tuleap and fall how are we coming along with the plan to open a rift and jaro as well sorry captain what plan to open a rift oh i figured jaro had filled you in uh, the plan is to send the omega particle emanating from the tachyon rift or black hole into fluidic space. Uh, instead of having to fly into it and destroy it, which would potentially destroy the new creatures we've discovered, this would remove the particle as a problem for this sector. Does that make sense? So you want to open a singularity inside another singularity to affect an entirely new dimension of space. That's the plan. Well, I can't see any way that this could go wrong. All right. Um, 
I don't know that our deflector has that kind of power, but let's find out. See, we already have the necessary specifications to close a rift to fluidic space. I can't imagine the necessary computations to be too much more extreme to reverse that. Mr. Tulayev, uh, I'm Mr. Tulayev. What I mean is, uh, Mr. Pro, have you ever uh, opened a locked door? Yes. Would you say that opening a locked door is harder than closing a door? I understand what you're getting at. All right. So maybe uh, when I say that we don't know that the, 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 uh, the deflector dish will take the power, maybe trust me as chief engineer next time. <laughs> that gets a chuckle from O'Connor. He's like, I love this guy. <laughs> Ambassador Titania may be able to help you with with the uh, calculations. She was the one who came up with the plan. And she actually peeks it back into the CIC and says, I heard my name. Am I needed? Assist to lay up and opening a rift. Um, okay, yeah. And she uh, sort of hops up and uh, sits next to lay up and says, okay, um, how much power we got? Well, power, I don't think, is a problem. It's whether I can focus the beam in such a way that we won't blow up the entire deflector, losing our shields and all our defle all our uh, protection from the uh, surrounding radiation. Eh, what's the worst that can happen? Well, I think the worst that can happen is the ship explodes and the crew dies. Oh. Sorry, fair point. I, I keep forgetting that your species and species like you can't just survive in vacuum. You know, that is a fair point. Uh, there are a lot of ways that we uh, we envy you, Undine. Hmm. Well, uh, we'll start here. And she starts leading you through the process of uh, opening a singularity in a singularity. And I'm going to offer that same sort of deal, either an extended task or a high difficulty, high reward. Oh, high difficulty, high reward every time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, this is going to be a rare difficulty six task. Okay. I, I love the captain's reaction. You could just... <laughs> but this is uh, this is one of those rare situations where it's worth going above and beyond the difficulty five scale. So, it's difficulty six. The task here is going to be a daring engineering. The assist is going to be engines and security from the Matahari. Okay. All right. I would like to use my uh, determination, uh, mm -hmm. tap tapping the key, get along better with machines than people, mm -hmm. um, to get those initial two successes. Okay. And then if I could have those other two uh, momentum to to buy myself. Oh wait, yes. yeah, a second, a, a third dice to roll. I would mm -hmm. like to spend my determination to activate Spirit of Discovery to give us three momentum. Okay. I would like to call upon my value to find it a, find it before it's a problem, no time to think. And I will give an impassioned speech about how I believe in Prawl and the rest of the crew over the comms and how this is a very serious situation, but together we will get through it. Because cool. I find it funny while that's all going on, we just cut to like a lower deck scene where some like ensign is just like eating like an ice cream sundae in one of the <laughs> lower decks, and he sort of looks up at the loudspeakers, and goes, what "The hell are they doing now?" <laughs> yeah. But uh, important question, Connor: uh, Does the captain have veteran? He does. Well, roll me a challenge die because you could get that uh, determination right back. Oh, oh yeah, just one. Yep, just one. All right, you don't get it back, unfortunately. Ah, it's okay. The oh, the only uh, focus I have that might apply is warp field dynamics, and I'm guessing that's not going to cut it. Yeah, unfortunately, no. You do have three more momentum. Um, but he right. spent two. He spent two. He did. Oh, you got it back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, if I spend those other three, that gets me my fourth dice to roll, right? Correct. That was my thought. Might be worth it, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. So here comes the ship. Okay. Oh, yeah. right. so we're, at, we're at four. We're, we're already at four. I just need to roll yeah. two. Here we go. 
Nice. Yes! <laughs> so you actually get a point of momentum back, and we're going to sort of go to that exterior shot of the Matahari, where lancing out uh, from the deflector dish uh, is an orange-tinted beam that uh, sort of dodges in, in between the uh, gravimetric anomalies like a lance. And uh, we bounce it off the we bounce it off the the probe we've already got out there, so we can. Okay, so you bounce it off of the probe, and uh, what happens is it slams and spikes into the tachyon singularity, and it's almost like watching um, a whirlpool interacting with another whirlpool, or like a tornado running into another tornado, where the amount of energy and cataclysmic interaction is off the charts for a few seconds. Before, with like a tiny little, almost like a burp noise, uh, the singularities eat themselves. Now, before I say anything further, I do need to roll something here. And what I would say is that if I roll an effect here, what you've done is you've pulled something from, from fluidic space. So you do not want to see effects here. Okay, so you guys Praise. got off easy. Praise! <laughs> that yeah. when the singularity goes, it goes for good. It does not spew out any other bio ships, doesn't spew out any Undine. It just goes. Well done, Tolan. Well done. Oh, the Ambassador Titania did most of the heavy lifting. I just modulated the power suit. Well, well done to you both. A stand down yellow alert. I'm saying that, or I'm spending one threat that when you stand down from yellow alert uh, to lay up the ceiling panel next to you falls out. <laughs> to lay up the Malkovich. Uh, Mal I forget. Is Malkovich the Russian that we did? Yeah. Uh, this is Malkovich. Go ahead, sir. Send uh, Jennings, the, the ceiling repair specialist, uh, another panel in the bridge. Another panel, sir. How we, we we replaced those last week. I know. It's it's the Matahari's weird sealing adhesive. It's just not as effective as you'd hope. I will ensure that we input duct tape on everything up there, sir. Excellent. Good work. <laughs> All right. Well, I would I... like to send a message to the creatures. Um, They're actually apology. sending one to you already. Oh, I was actually going to apologize to them, but mm -hmm. I'll accept the message. Uh, the message you get from the Space Kraken is, you have closed the additional entry. Thank you. We respond. You are welcome. We apologize for the pain that we caused you. It was unintentional. Um, but we wish you all the best. Um, we are known as the Federation of Planets, and um, we hope to meet you again on peaceful terms. All right. And I think at that, the uh, the big space kraken sort of goes back into the anomaly and disappears. Bye. And at this point, I sort of just open the floor um, because this was this was sort of my buffer time. Or what is it? I think it is buffer time in Lower Decks. Where literally I was planning, like, if you guys did get in a fight, I wanted to give you guys the time. Mm. Um, but yeah, you've honestly completed the adventure earlier than I expected. So if you have any scenes, we can certainly explore those. But... Otherwise, I'm cool with uh, ending here if you guys are. Mr. Prowl, I, I owe you an apology. In For the what? heat of the moment, I am afraid that I let my sarcastic remarks get a little bit a hold of me. I appreciate your suggestions, and I will endeavor next time not to snap at you uh, when, when you deliver helpful suggestions that perhaps I've already thought of. I didn't take it personally. Excellent. When you have a free moment, I would like to talk to you later, though. Excellent. Well, anytime. Uh, perhaps you'd like to talk now. We can meet in my office in engineering. I should check in. I'll meet you down there. All right. So that'll be our next scene, then, is uh, Prawl and Tuleyup. You guys head down to main engineering. And, uh, of course, Tuleyup, when you check in, uh, the engineers are just more or less making sure the EPS conduits are still ship shape. Um, everything's actually coming back green. There, there isn't a whole lot of problems here. Excellent. Mr. Prowl, have a seat. What can I do for you? I know about your attempts to access the core. I am afraid I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Yes, you do. I assure you, I don't. I have made no attempts to access the core. I have accessed the core. No attempts. I did it. <laughs> so you're aware right now it's not recording anything in engineering. Oh, I'm relatively sure it's not recording anything anywhere. On the other hand, I can't tell what it's storing, and that is what I find troubling. Well, obviously, whatever it had stored just got transmitted somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Prohol. I want your help. It... Oh. Well, what can I do for you? We need to figure out how this happened. Now, certainly. I can have that sensor data delivered to both of us. But I don't know that I can offer you any more insights than I was able to on the bridge. I think you'll be able to figure something out. I have faith in your ability. Let me ask you a question. Are we looking for a way to prevent anyone from accessing your core again? Or are we trying to figure out what might have had access to our ship and whether that is something we want to explore? And before you can reply, Prawl, there's a flash of light and sitting on the warp core is none other than Q. And Q sort of looks at you too and says, right, uh, you're the Rigelian and you're the Cardassian. Yeah, uh, don't mind me. Go continue your conversation. Well, Mr. Prawl, what is my motivation? How am I to help you? Just kind of look over at Q for a moment. Look back to Tully up. Both. I see. Well, you'll forgive me if I don't sign on joyously at the prospect of keeping anyone from accessing your core again. However, I am interested in finding out how someone would have accessed our systems with such speed. The, you may not be overjoyed about helping me on that first part. However, with your help, that will grant you full access to it. Well, now you're speaking my language, Mr. Prowl. I'm very interested in this core. All right, well, uh, I will uh, I will take a look at that data and uh, absolutely let you know what I uh, what I what I suss out. Uh, I can. Let me just say, just to start with, I can say that you'll probably want to uh, recalibrate your uh, resonating displacement coupling because I may have made a few modifications of my own. <laughs> and uh, have opened a sort of, well, let's call it a back door. That was you? Indeed. Do you know how many reports have crossed my desk in the last three weeks because of that? Oh, I hope very much that I have not troubled your engineering team too much. Seven of them a day. Yes, well, you'll probably see less. As uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm getting a little tired. <clears throat> Was uh, the cascade dissonance from you are doing as well? Oh, yes. And your engineers are very quick on picking that up. On the other hand, they missed that while the cascade dissonance was going on, I did nullify the linear plasma feed inverter. So uh, I've also been accessing the system from there. There is a third way, but I am not going to tell you because I don't trust you quite yet. And Q actually claps and says, oh, well done. Well done. You have outmaneuvered our Cardassian. Very good, Mr. Tolea. Well, thank you, Mr. Q. <laughs> I have been feeling myself a little lately. And at this point, Q actually like materializes a uh, bit of popcorn and just looks intently at Prawl as he starts eating the popcorn. I'm just going to stand up for a moment, look over towards the uh, warp core again. I do have one more thing before I head back to the office, though. Have you, by any chance whatsoever, noticed the isolinear chips behind Junction 7Y? Uh, yes. You mean the ones that have been connected to a uh, simulation of engineering happening in Holodeck 3? No. Not those oh. ones. Oh. Why don't you go take a look and let me know what you find later. 
Oh, I, I will, Mr. Brawl. I'm very much enjoying this game. I will let you know what I find out with that sensor data. I look forward to it. I love it. Cool. And of course, Q does the thing where he's already gone when you look back at him. But uh, yeah, any other scenes you guys would like to take out of the way? I feel good. That's a good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's a good place to end. So that is where we will end session nine. And yeah, thank you uh, so much for having fun with me. Hopefully, of course, you did have fun. Uh, this is where I'm going to end the recording for YouTube, but Twitch stick around for a little bit longer. So YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. And you will see these lovely gentlemen on uh, Halloween night where I'll have a spooky sort of episode for them. Oh, I'm excited. But okay. yeah, uh, see you later, YouTube.